All right. Um, so do we need to like formally, I, I know I do this every time. And I appreciate very much, Brianna, that you always make me sound more intelligent in the, in the meeting notes than, than I actually come across as. But uh, so we'll call the meeting to order. Um, the first thing I wanted to go over was the income statement. So I don't know if everybody has their income statement. And I, there was a couple of things I wanted to point out about that. Oh, and here comes Marie. I'll wait for her because part of it has to do with um, something that she had done for me. Hello, Marie. We're just going to start with the income statement. And I was just going to point out that um, on the income statement, the year to date budget or what was budgeted for tax levy, that is going to change. Marie had worked out a schedule for us. Unfortunately, we didn't have, I didn't get it to join in time to get it reflected on this paper here. So um, next time it'll be, it's, it reflects more truly how we receive the money rather than just being divided across each month. So that will change. Yeah, and so. I have to say, I didn't get it to Carolyn in time no. for her to get it to Joy in time. It all worked out. We can all adjust. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, and I don't know how people feel about this, and I didn't want to make a change to the report without um, you know everybody agreeing. I'm not sure how important the current month and current budget is compared to year to date and year to date budget. In my mind, the year to date actual year to date budget and a variance is more important to look at than the actual current. Cause we're, I mean, if we're looking at it every month anyways, then the current month, you're gonna see the difference in the current month as we go along. I don't know how other people felt about that or whether they felt like we needed to keep it in. Just sometimes it becomes like a lot of numbers that I don't know how relevant they all are. So that was my suggestion. I don't know if people feel strongly that they wanna keep the current month actual budget in there, we can. Um, if not, then I'm gonna change it so it's just year to date actual budget and then show the variance on the report. So, yeah, there's, um, <clears throat> there's, you know, issues with the current month a lot. Sometimes, you know, our bills <clears throat> are paid quarterly. So the monthly amount doesn't have much meaning. Right. Um, and the other thing is uh, we don't parcel out um, energy bills. So we get a ton of those in the winter and then they die out in the summer. <laughs> um, so again, it, it, there's quite a number of items that don't have a lot of meaning on a monthly basis for us. That's what I think. <clears throat> so unless I hear, do I have to make a motion for something? I, like I find it useful. You do? Um, I do. It, it's how I look at both, um, how we compare this particular month as well as how we're doing in the overall budget. Um, well, I think I think that's part of the problem though, <clears throat> because they don't think it does show you how you're doing necessarily. Well, um, but, and I, but think I it find adds, it meaningful. I think it adds confusion, that's all. <laughs> well, why not, I'll leave it, I guess we'll leave it the way it is for now. Can we add the variance on there just for year to date, not current month? And then yes. and if you wanna see, mm -hmm. you know, Otherwise, I'm just trying to cut down on how many numbers we're looking at because we're looking at lots of numbers. And when I, um, I actually I, look- I find the variance confusing um, because when you're looking at revenues, a, plot, a positive figure means one thing versus the opposite thing when you're looking at expenditures. So having, oh, more, you know, positive revenue figure uh, is a good thing. A positive expenditure variance is a bad thing. And I just find it confusing in that sense. So I have no problem with you eliminating 
the variance figure? Oh, I wasn't, no, the variance isn't on there. I wanted to add it. To me, it's, oh. it, to me, it's an important. It isn't on there? I'm sorry. No. no. To me, it's. I the, would prefer to be added. Yeah. yeah. To me, um, I thought it was Otherwise, I'm always doing it in my head. Yeah, I, I, have, I thought it was on there. Yeah, sorry. I may have removed it from this one or didn't get it added just because of space, but like, if we have way too many things, do we want the current month and the current month actual and the current month um, budgeted plus the current month variance? Or do we want, you know what I mean? Like the, it ends up being six columns, which ends up being a lot of pages that you'd have to right. like lay. Yeah. So I've just been, I, no. I guess I forgot to re-add the current month variance or yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do the current month variance because to me, okay. just I would just do the year to date variance because we're really looking at this as a cumulative over the year. Okay, sure. Okay, I'm. I'm sorry. I've, I've gotten confused. I thought we were talking about the the monthly variance, and that's what you wanted to see added. No year to date variance. There's no year on these on the current one. It's yeah. That one budget, doesn't have budget, it. Year to date actual year to date budget. Right. And I was trying to get rid of current month. But if you feel strongly about it, Marie, we'll leave it in. But then the variance is just going to show the year to date variance. That's, we, that's fine with me. Can we take out the year? Do you want both columns of the current month? Current month actual and current month budgeted? Or can I take one out just because sometimes I put notes down and they won't fit? It would current month actual be the most helpful? Well, you still have to then have the have, need the comparison to see what it what it's expected to be. So but um, if it's if it's an art in a sense, some of these are artificial um, expectations. You know, if we if from what I understand from what Paul's saying, it, it's, it's kind of made up. The, but the, the operative word is some, that, I, you know. I, Just know the majority of income statements don't normally show monthly. They show mm -hmm. year to date. I mean, that's the way, that's what it's meant to be. So that's why I was kind of trying to just cut it down. When but, you say the majority in for other organizations or correct. Yeah. Most businesses, most but we can leave it. Why don't you why don't you take out the, the variant the monthly variance? We did and then, yes and, and then see from there. Yeah, it just won't all fit. I'm just warning everybody ahead of time. <laughs> okay. Unless I make the numbers really small. So it's either no, no, no. numbers no, no, really no, no. That's what That's what we had to do. They were really small. They're hard yeah. to read. <laughs> All right. Um, so that moving on, I mean, did anybody have any questions about the bills? I had a question, but Joy answered it. So we changed, um, it looks like we changed snow plowing for Lansingburg. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna plow it twice. <laughs> in the same place. Very funny. <laughs> I'm just saying. I saw it on there twice. That was the only thing that kind of stuck out to me. That was different. It Does seems it like that was the most popular question to be asked in the office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it I does kind of jump out at you, you know. Well, and I figure <laughs> I know Steve Gowie like waits for forever to send you his bill, so. Like yes. all of a sudden he shows up and he wants his money and it's yep. But, all right. Um, other than that, I didn't I didn't have any questions. So everybody feels yeah. comfortable with the bills. Door right there. What what broke? So do I do we make the motion now to we make the motion that we right will yeah, recommend right. to the board that we pay the bills in the amount oh. of forty five. What about what about Keith? Keith I think there's a question. a question about what broke. What broke? Oh, I didn't. I thought he was talking to somebody else. <laughs> what, what do you mean? What broke? 
think that was Keith's question. I don't know what he's asking though. What broke? What's he referring to? Are you talking about, I don't know, not the door repair because that was here, the front door. The, the there was something repair. else. Um, Keith? Keith? He's on mute. He's on mute? Yep. He's muted. I think he is calling from, yeah. okay, there he is. What? Why, why did we pay Mangoy? Um, the door at the glass door at the main library boat broke, and so they had to come and fix that. It wouldn't close. Now we paid stamps last month, and we're paying them again this month. Yes, because the Lansingburg had heating issues, and they had to come and fix that. Okay. I got one more question on the credit card stuff. Sure, go ahead. Where does all this postage go? What are we using it for? The postage is for the um, books that people request that's out of our system. And so we get requests, like we might request from New York State Library or a library in Ohio, they send us their books and then we have to ship it back to them. It's interlibrary loan. Okay, thank you. Sure. We all set? Any more questions? I have a question on the credit card bill, I believe it was. Okay. Uh, did we purchase a new printer? Yes. yes we purchased a printer. <laughs> Okay, hopefully it does recognize it automatically. Hewlett Packard there. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, so I'm going to make the motion that we recommend to the board that we pay the bills in the amount of $45,363.50. Anybody second that? Second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, I don't know. I find, I always find this the most confusing of the reports is the uh, investment account where you break out everything on there. I don't know if people have questions. We got, a, obviously there's on there, uh, we got a third payment from Shippo and the amount of $25,500. Um, and, and then we also transferred some money to our operating fund. So it seems like those are the only changes that we've had from December. Does anybody have any questions on that? All right. Um, then that just leaves then we have the bank reconciliations, which are fine, and the balance statement. Does anybody have any questions on any of those? And the fundraising tally, which the fundraising tally, it looks like we're doing well. We're ahead of where we were last year with it. So, yeah, a little bit ahead. A little um, bit ahead. And our printing was lower than last year. So, all good things. <laughs> All right, then I guess uh, that's it for me. So do we make a motion to accept all the financial reports? Is that what no. I need? No, you just no, we don't. Yeah. No, no. Then we're all, then I guess we're just done. Well, I, I have another item. Sure. Um, Last month, Paul said that he would try to have figures on the surplus from 2021 for this meeting. It's, are they, are the figures available? Um, it's a guess. I was um, approaching it in different ways. <laughs> uh, if you do the simplest thing, <clears throat> excuse me 
And if you take the um, income statement for December 31st, which is the end of 2021, and um, you subtract out the, the obvious $83,000, which was a payment for a particular grant, um, if you accept the rest of the income, compared to the expenses for the year, you come out with about 54,000 as, as um, in, the, in the black. Um, to me, it's sort of, I guess, the simplest way to look at that. Um, it seems, you know, it sort of gets lost a little bit when you figure we carry over you know, we have to carry over quite a bit of money because we don't get, um, you know, a tax check from the city until March. So we have to have almost three months worth of operating expenditures. So some of that just gets used, you know, but if you do, a, and I think basically looking at the, you know, December 20, this December 31st statement, as far as I can see, almost everything else in terms of income is is um, is valid except that eighty three thousand. So that doesn't seem too bad in terms of what the budget was, right? Fifty four thousand. No, it's, it's, it's really know. it's really pretty good. Um, so because I, I know that's one of the reasons to look at it is to see whether uh, we ask for too much. Yeah. You know, yeah, because, and that doesn't seem to have been the case, 54,000 on over a million doesn't seem bad. Yeah, I mean, that's something that, um, you know, <laughs> in terms of our needs, you know, with the with the buildings and the matching grants and so on, that's it's relatively small. I mean, it go goes pretty quickly. <laughs> and we were also concerned; we were uncertain as to how the tax levy payments would, you know, whether they'd be short because of the of COVID and so forth. So, okay, so Paul, you know, I I, I think you're certainly right that we need some money carried over to cover the lean time before we get the big tax levy, uh, tax revenue payments. So should we revisit this then in What's April? That? Should we revisit this, the surplus in April then? Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I mean, is some of the is some of the surplus because we've had we've been so short staffed as well? Part of it, yeah. You know, um, I mean, we've been you know we haven't had so I would hate to think that we thought that we asked for too much. It's really that we just haven't had the staff that we should have. Well, yeah. I mean, if you look at January, um, you know, the salary line, the whole payroll yeah. line is. Uh, about 16% behind, you know, what the budget says. Right. Again, it's because of, you know, the, the staff turnover and the fact that uh, we don't have a full staff. So, you know, that would account for, for some of that, yeah. Well, we're, Carolyn, at least I'm saying that I think we did well in estimating okay. what our needs would be. I'm, okay, I'm, you were saying revisit it. I didn't know whether you were thinking we had asked for too much money. No, no, but that's one of the reasons to look at it to ensure that we haven't, you know, it's, it's just to to make sure that we didn't. And I don't, I don't think so. Fifty four thousand on a million over a million, right? A million and a quarter, uh, I think, is pretty pretty good. I, I was just saying, revisit having a surplus, and then after the time that we needed to pay our our current bills because we aren't getting any any tax revenues. So in April, we could go back and visit it and see what we wanted to do with that surplus. Well, 
Right, Ho hoping that we still have it, right? Right. <laughs> and that's why one reason that you do have surpluses because you, you may need them. Right. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions or comments or suggestions? No? And I guess we'll motion to close, to end the finance committee meeting. Do we need to do that too? <laughs> Trying to get this down, the protocol. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Motion to end. <laughs> All those in favor? Gives you a 10 minute. We can. We can walk around till 5.30. That's right. Now you got a 10 minute break. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. okay, then um, we will call today's meeting uh, to order. And first thing on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone of our public attendees who would like to make a comment? Okay, so next item is the treasurer's report and approval of expenditures. Carolyn, you're on. Okay, um, so we went over the um, financial reports and they, everything looks like it's in order. So I, we are recommending to the board that we pay um, our bills in the amount of $45,363.28. So I'm making the motion that we pay those bills. I second. All those in favor? Oh, will you do that part, don't you, Evelyn? Or no? Other discussion from anyone else? Does anybody who wasn't here want to talk about the bills? I think we're the same people. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see Kirsten here. That's no. right. Okay. Okay. Or Jerry. Yeah. So we'll do the all in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Those not in favor? None. No abstentions. All right. Um, next thing is our consent agenda. Is there anything, um, any pieces to the consent agenda? I believe it's the minutes, um, Upper Hudson President's report. I don't believe there's an admin committee or a building committee report. So um, I'll make the motion to accept the consent agenda. Any discussion? Nothing to be pulled. In that case, do we have a second? I'll have a second. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I did have a question, though. I, I know that we had voted to establish an outreach committee, and I don't see that listed on the consent agenda under com committee reports? I believe that is because too, it's it's, an, uh, it's not a standing committee. We've added it, but it's not a standing committee. And right now we have pretty much a standing committee and then Upper Hudson, which is an approved committee and position from the, um, and that was something you requested that there be a written report some years ago. Right, the idea being that that it then doesn't use up time during the right. the board meeting and expedites things. Um, you can, I don't, you know, I, I thought that it was all committees are supposed to. So has the has the outreach committee met? They have not. You would have been notified. Even if I know I you're not interested know. in it, but you'd still would have heard. Well, about no, it. and I'm very interested in you know I'm very interested in what it's going to be looking at. Uh, but I, I, I rephrase. I knew you were not interested in serving on it. Mm -hmm. um, I, has a chair been appointed? 
To be honest, I none has been appointed. I think most likely I'll be the one calling the meetings. Okay, I just it occurred to me that I hadn't heard anything about it. I was just interested. Thanks. I don't think we're quite ready to put that quite into process yet, but I know there's interest. But thank you. I just want to write that down. All right. In that case, um, I think we all took yes. Regular agenda. So the first thing on our regular agenda is our long-term plan or what I've been terming, term, calling the uh, future planning to kind of cover all the different concepts of what it could or should be. Um, I don't know if anyone had any objections or other thoughts about the process in doing this. I'm trying to find here. No. Anyway, so um, I did send everyone a kind of overview of what we could do. Um, so step one was going over the two sections from the 2011 long range plan. Um, and I think it'd be, I sent everyone also kind of my little what's on it, my um, attempt at refreshing it. Uh, I'd like to actually start that discussion. If other people want to please give some ideas of how we can change the 2011 um, plan. <laughs> I did have a question on that. Sure. Um, wouldn't it have made, made more sense to start with the more recent work that had been done, since that's the more recent thinking, um, My rather than the 211? And I know that you had you would ask the question as to what the difference was between a long-term plan and a strategic plan. and. I think that would be good to figure out uh, before we attempt to proceed. Well, my thought in, in what I wrote was, what we are required to have is, is termed a long range plan. And since the 2011 was a long range plan, and if you look at the 2019, it becomes much more detailed so I was looking at 2011 as being a little bit more generalized, um, you know, the bigger picture items. And then we can always work in the 2019 piece um, and put those pieces in after we've set up a structure, you know, using the structure that started in 2011. And what was the other thought I had when you said that? Um, and as we work through it, we, those are the thoughts that we should be having. What is that mission statement? And where is the difference between the long range plan and strategic plan? So my, my thoughts then would be, shouldn't we start with the mission statement? Are we all on board with what the mission statement are, is? Do we feel comfortable with it? Did we know what it was? Because it's not on our, our website. I think no, it's not. It no, is not. not. And I we didn't redo it in 2019 either. And actually, I have to tell you that this mission statement is not the one that I believe that I have been using on all our grants when I, they asked for my mission statement. I'm using an older one, I guess. So. so my thought is sometimes if you go through a process, at least to a certain point, it could clarify what we see as that mission. I mean, we all have our own thoughts about what it is. We might all have our own thoughts, but as a library, yeah. we need to have it. Oh, we do. But I'm thinking as we go, again, I, it was just my ideas and no one said anything either about it, um, that if we went through this uh, and did some of the work, it could clarify what we want to use or articulate as a mission statement. So I may say, you know, is it the cart or the horse? Which comes first? I just thought it would be easier for us 
at least to start, because this is rather to me awkward doing this virtually. You know, we're not together. It's that way we can have a great big whiteboard and put things up um, as easily as when you do this in person, that this might be a way that we can actually kind of focus in on something during these meetings um, and at least come up with some sort of product. And while we're doing it, like I said, think about what that mission is. That should be in the back of my, our minds as we go through these pieces. And if there's any objection or other thoughts, please. Well, again, it may be the kind of thing where one works for one person and a different way works for another. So, I do think we should have it on our website, though. Oh, the absolutely. Mission, the mission statement? Yes. I thought it, it was there as part of the strategic plan, but mm -hmm. I'm looking, you know, I, that's just a memory, and my memory may not be correct. And I'm looking now as we talk. It does say there's a mission, but again, Carolyn is saying that's not what she's been using. There's another one. And is, is this what we want to use as our mission statement? Right. Like you can go to pretty much any of the other libraries in the system and, and put in mission statement and their oh, library, yeah. and it'll come right up. Yep. But ours does not. So I think it needs to be somewhere where it's easily. Oh, easily so, absolutely. so that's really a flaw with the website because if, if there isn't is that it just isn't that visible to people. And I think you're right. Actually, from what I've read, mission statements should be something that you can say off the top of your head what it is uh, right. so, so that you can be telling people all the time. And I've, I've seen some really short ones that I can remember. Right. Essentially, information, education, and community. That I can remember. Yeah, we definitely need to. Sh we definitely need a short one, and we definitely need something that you know catches the eye and people remember. Correct. And that was it's, what's wrong with the 2011 one. <laughs> it's a little long, and it, it's something that guides us too. Um, at Upper Hudson, we have each of us has our own little name placards in front of us, and the part that we see is the mission statement. So every time we sit there, we remember what it is. It's not just three words, but it's it's not long either. Okay. Well, I'll keep it in the back of my mind as we go through. All right. Thank you. And uh, you know, we don't have to wait till the end to really come up with a mission statement. Uh, I figured at least for today, we might want to do something a little bit more focused. If I was wrong, I'm uh, you know sorry about that, but. I had a question. What's wrong with using? I look I'm looking at the long range plan of service, has a mission listed there. What's wrong with using that? That is our mission statement. It's just not anywhere on our website, was more my. And then we're talking about should we change it? And you, you use something else, Carolyn? Yes, I used to use. Let me see. I, I looked it up because when I saw this one, I was like, that doesn't look familiar to me. Uh, the Troy Public Library exists to provide, facilitate, and advocate for open access, which I like that, to information for the citizens of Troy, New York, to enrich their lives and support the education, cultural, and economic vitality of the community. It's very wordy. It is. But so is the new one. I don't think we <laughs> cut any words out on the new one. <laughs> But Carolyn, I access. Pardon? could you send that to us, to all of us? Yeah. That'd be great. That'll give us something else to work with. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to I'll pull. I think at one point, we, <coughs> there might have been a compilation of different mission statements. Um, okay. Back when in 2019, 2019, I'm going to go see if I still have that document. If not, I can gather some more. Yeah, I looked at some other ones. You know, like Albany's is a sentence. Essential resource promoting community, lifelong learning, and quality services in a safe, in a safe, welcoming space. Does it for me? <laughs> Does it need to fit on a T-shirt? That's right. But I'm certainly not. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, 
to a, back to this point of, all right, we're here, we're here now. Shall we, I want to put this off again, if possible. Um, did anyone else get to look at the, the two sections and have some comments? And we can deal with that today and then re reconnoiter about what we do next month. Well, in my mind, the first thing that is on there is work towards transforming the library into a network of community centers that serve as a vocal point for neighborhood and citizen development. If that is truly our strategic plan, then that would have a big impact on the building committee and the choices that we're making. And I don't believe we should be doing that at all because we're a library, not a network of community centers. People pay us to be a library, not community center. Interesting discussion because again, libraries have become not community centers, but a center for community. in the sense of bringing people together, a place to meet, discuss. Um, personally, what I did is I, I took that whole section out. Well, I shouldn't say the whole section. I removed um, because I thought it was just very specific. It might not be where we're headed um, and change it to provide physical space, parentheses, facility, facilities to provide library service to the community. And I also put that as a secondary piece. So service, um, the, you know, the part that's responding to the patron and community needs is first and the facility part is second. Because I am a true believer in form follows function. In section two, I'm nervous about stating a minimum of 12% of the overall operating budget, particularly based on the comments in this month's director's report. I think we, and the needs we have to maintain a box or two to work from, I think we could find ourselves chasing our tails here real fast. It's, it's one of the questions I asked Paul, what is, um current best practices for as if you, they look if libraries are looking at what percentage of a library's budget should be directed towards materials and defining materials as not just books magazines papers but things like um, streaming services um, other patron a program, you know, what's programming, what's materials, et cetera, and looking at it that way too. But that's the other thing. We we talk about materials as a percentage, but we don't talk about what part programming. So, that, you know, do we put any kind of number in there? Do we leave the percentage out? What, what concerns me is if we were able to respond to, let's say, a 15% increase in the salary line, and we start putting more money in the building, then to say, oh, now we got to come up with more that we've raised that budget, and now we got to come up with more than what we spent last year or, and more than rate of inflation to keep with it. We start chasing our tails here, and that's not a responsible way to go. Okay. So do, if I'm interpreting this, Keith, are you saying that we should not put a percentage in there? I don't think it's wise for the next couple of years. Okay. Given the perturbations we're going to experience in our budget, if we do some of the things we need to do in terms of funding our staff and whatever buildings we work from. Okay. Well, there's one point. Does anyone have any problem with not putting in a percentage at all? But could I just say, but is this, what we're working toward or is it what so if it's what we're working toward not necessarily what we're doing is it then inappropriate to have something that's a, beyond what we can currently do i 
question well, correctly, this document would be what we're working. Some of it will be what we're doing. There's no way of getting around that. But I think basically it is what we're working towards, but it doesn't well, mean we need to be specific. I think the long range plan is just that, it's a plan, much like a budget is a plan. Um, things change and uh, you can't always meet you know your goals, but um, I don't think it's uh, means that you don't have to have goals. The, uh, may I uh, weigh in? Since this was part of the work that I have done for the last 25 years, a mission statement uh, describes the working of an organization and the values that underpin it. Uh, it is not usually aspirational, that's more like a vision but it describes what the work of the organization does and how it goes about it. So um, words like accessible and open and those, those kinds of things are appropriate to a mission statement, but it, it, is, it, it doesn't forecast what you're going to do going forward. It describes what you do and how you do it. But I think what well, Keith is referring to is what's in the uh, the long term plan, not the mission statement. When he when right. he's talking about the twelve percent. So, Freddie, you're at a disadvantage. You don't have all these papers in front of you to see. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Can I, well, if you look, you if you want, you can look on the website if you have that. That it's literally. I got confused. I thought you were talking about the mission statement. No, we just we're, we're going to try and focus on those sections of the long range plan. At least, how's this? We're going to try and see what we can get through tonight. At a certain point, we'll see where we are. Look at the time, and decide if we want to take a breather at least. Go on to the rest of the agenda. And if there's time later and we aren't spent, we can go back and go to another section. But if we can at least start with. Some ideas on what people see as a service section. That would be helpful. Um, what you're saying, do you think there should be something about the percentage of a budget? Or just, yes, or be silent on that issue. Um, yeah, I mean, it's something that um, is a goal. You know, the problem with the materials budget is um, it's about the only line in the budget that's reasonably flexible. Um, <laughs> when you talk about, you know, heating and light, you don't have much room there. Um, so very often the materials budget gets rated for something else. But if you have a kind of a goal to say, well, it should be, you know, this particular level, then maybe um, it would prevent us from eyeing the materials budget every time we need some more money. <laughs> well, has it present prevented you in the past 10 years from doing that? If it's been the goal this whole time in our current long range plan? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so, so you're saying if we have it as a specific number, then, and we know that that's the goal that we're working toward, it, it has you second guessing, is this where I wanna pull the money from to you know, pay, steal from Peter to pay Paul kind of thing, but that is what it is in the current plan. Yeah, I mean, it, <clears throat> by putting a number on it, I mean, by by putting that percentage on it as a goal, you know, you're just saying that we're a library and the materials are really important. <laughs> um, I, if it means, you know, buying materials or having the power shut off, I guess we'd probably have to pay the power bill. Um, but you know, if we have it as an overall goal, if we say this is really important, you know, to have this kind of uh, resource available, um, then I think that's part of 
the plan as part of a long range plan. Um, at the end, you could sit down and say, well, did we meet that goal? You know. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I'm saying is this, it, uh, it, this was the long range plan that was adopted to, into effect in 2011. So it was uh, ostensibly the goal that we've been looking at and working on this whole time. Am I misunderstanding something? Um, historically, the materials budget had been, I'm trying to think of, of a, the best word I can use, brutalized to the point that, um, yeah, it, it, it yeah. was barely there. It was, okay. it was in trouble. It was way into trouble. And that's part of why um, at some point the board used to vote not to go over the um, tax cap to the point where the material budget was so demolished that it couldn't happen anymore. And we couldn't stay within the tax cap. Um, you know, that there, there were a slew of other things that needed to be met too, but there was almost no money in the material budget. Um, it was almost a negative, negative. Um, so we went and, and started going over the tax cap so we could fix that. So we didn't know following these numbers did not occur for those, you know, some years ago. And this was, that, this was uh, done, this, this plan was done after we had just started being tax revenue supported so that the financial situation was much worse before we became a special library district. Um, and this would have been based on, on that experience more so than after, since we became a special library district. But I'm, I'm looking at the percentage for the, the materials line currently on the income statement is about 7% between six and 7%. Yes, I, that's why I was, the word maintain. Uh, to be more a goal, I guess. Would it maintain imply that we were actually at that point? Do you have a substitute word? Hmm? Do you have a, a substitute word? Not at the moment. Okay. I'll put a little what bracket I'm here. What I'm concerned about is that if we do something like raise our salaries to be competitive and thus raise, raise our budget, somebody's going to try to use that to just backdoor, then raise the materials budget even more. And we get these unintended consequences that keep bumping the budget up beyond what we'd intended to do. That's what my concern. Interesting, that was not what I was thinking that you were saying, Keith. So it's interesting to hear that. I thought you were, you were fearful that the uh, materials budget was going to be rated and therefore we wouldn't be able to achieve the 12%. No, I don't think we should be rating it at all, but I think we need to be very conscious of what we need to do with salaries, what we need to do to fund our shelter, but that we ha have a place for folks to work and come. And if we're saying it's 12% of the overall operating budget and we move the operating budget in those accounts, now we start backdoor raising it. And that makes it more difficult to do what we need to do in terms of the salary requests and the building needs. No, we shouldn't be rating the materials budget simply because that's why we exist as a library. Well, personally, while I don't like putting in a number as a, in a sense, doing this is, is, it isn't a contract, but in a way it is. It's a looser commitment that we're making to the public of what we want to do. But if we're looking at a budget and we can't do it in a given year, then we, we can't. And at the end of the year, we look at this, see what we've accomplished, see what goals we've met, um, 
see what has to be adjusted and do what we can to the the long range plan. I mean, we're supposed to, we really should be visiting it every year. I think that was one of the last steps was when we, this document is, is completed, we set the anniversary date and then revise it, re, you know, review, revise, whatever, however, you know, where we're meeting goals, where we're not meeting goals, if we're exceeding goals, um, to give us some idea. But if we put a percentage in there, does it mean that, say next year we are looking at those salary increases, but we can't do a 12% or a whatever percent we put in here, then we can't, but at least we can look at it the year after, the year after that and say, all right, we're not meeting it. How do we deal with this? Well, at least this is one of the questions that, you know, I, I think I'll, if, unless someone else has a better idea or a different idea, if we put these questions in about, you know, what we've discussed and then have some sort of comment afterwards, email each other, keep in contact and say, yeah, this works. And then we'll see what the consensus is on it. So again, I know this is a very awkward, um, strategy to do, but it's what we're dealing with right now. Um, but again, some, Carol, I know like for book selection, collection development policy, by the way, that is being reviewed right now. Weeding. Um, Could we be expecting say what? specifying the weed, the collections, isn't that just a normal? part of library operations. Yep, and it didn't is. We already, didn't we already do things like con conduct a community survey? And haven't we already done a, going back up in 1A, done a task force staff board members representatives determine building needs? Well, in some sense we did, let's go backwards, a task force, yes, but I, I personally looked at that whole section and, and changed it only because we, to make it a little broader for now. Um, this was also but, written before there was a building committee. Um, right. Didn't we, we establish a building committee after this was written? No? When I started, there was a building committee, but we did meet separately. The building committee met during the board meetings. We covered mm -hmm. its work during the board meetings. But then that shifted to a separate time, separate. I think it became, the building committee became part of the, the bylaws. I, I believe that building committee may have always been in there. I know there was always, a, when I started with the building committee, but it was um, just dealt with a little differently. Maybe not as formalized. It, exactly. Um, that's a better way of putting it. Um, it was just said those building issues were board, um, needed board commentary. So we just kept talking about it during board meetings. And then it got separated out. Um, and, 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 Evelyn, so basically what you're saying is under service, you're just going to have, instead of what it has here on this long-term plan, you, you want it to say, provide physical space to provide library services to the community. Yes, as the heading. As the, as the number one, right? As the number one. And then what I put for A is investigate options for physical aspects of service delivery that offers access to the entire community. So that would be what we're in a sense doing, but since it's in a process, it's still part of a long range plan. Right. Um, and it, you know, I just put a couple of keywords like comprehensive, plus benefit of each options, transportation and access issues. Um, I looked at and said where it says complete action plan, I wrote update yearly, uh, the building action plan for existing buildings, which is exact, we, it is what we are doing, but it's what we should continue to do. Um, I left search private and government sources because again, we've been doing it and need to continue doing that. Uh, consider other options for construction funding such as bonding. 
because if we pick certain choices, we may not really be able to um, do a capital campaign, which was in here. Um, and then one of the things I did add to was review standards set by the trustee handbook, because that's in many ways our guide. Um, and Keith, in answer to your question, back to service. Yes, we have done community service surveys, but that's something we should do periodically anyway. So I put that in as periodic community surveys, surveys with plural, to assess service needs. Um, use other demographic data to, um, oh, I didn't write. Well, my, my grammar is terrible here. Uh, use other demographic data um, to assess community uh, shifts. Um, program and materials for all ages and interests. And be aware and responsive to community diversity. So again, I, I, I personally, I try to keep it general. I'm not saying this, this is the end all and be all in, in some of my suggestions. But I figured for me, it was a better way of starting and looking and, and kind of taking it apart and setting some <laughs> foundations. But I really would love to hear some more ideas from others. Evelyn, I really like all of your edits. I'm wondering if it would be helpful for everyone if rather than just sending around like the old document for us to review before a meeting, if you if you sent out like a tracked changes or something of here's the old document, here's what I'm thinking. And then that may help facilitate some more discussion and yeah, make actually, it a little bit easier. Did I, I miss did, that? I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. I, it's all so hard. A little bit back. Um, I actually did send out this earlier. I've been re. I, did I, I miss it? I don't know. I sent it out. I'll admit I sent it. Out. I keep rewriting this and rewriting this, and rewriting this. I find I go to bed and I think of some more ideas and I go back and there's another iteration okay. until I go. Oh yeah, today's the meeting. So there is something. I did send out something. One says environment and the others um, service. Yeah. That that's the old one. No, she said. Oh, I, I, I sent actually, out a revised one. Yeah, yeah, I didn't put it. Okay, in the I'm sorry, box. I missed that. Oh no, oh, I'm sorry. I think it was today, Brianna. I don't. Oh, think it was okay. Okay. I sent it today. I was like, oh, today's this meeting. I better get this out now. I have to. Oh yeah, no, Brianna, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Brianna, I think you're on the right track, just in terms of document management. So we wouldn't okay. have to tile through so many documents at the same time during okay. a meeting. So could they, could maybe we have them come a little bit sooner? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, now that I'm getting a feel for how we're going to do this, again, this is as much as awkward for me as it is. <laughs> sure, of course. And I'm sorry uh, I missed that. Don't, don't be, it's my fault. Um, I will go through, I'll make sure everyone has this again. I'll send that out. I will make annotations. What I did would do of, of the first page with the ideas and the second page has annotations um, of things that I, I know have happened, have not happened. Like um, in the old document, uh, probably a year or two after this was created, um, Sickway got closed permanently. So it's one thing to say you want to have a, a center of community locations and then realize that you, just, <laughs> you couldn't even maintain what you had. So those are little things I think it's important for people to know, but- um, If I could point out something about please. A here. Um, you you're, have a task force to study building needs. Yeah, put that out. Well, since this was written, we've had two studies of building needs. I think we need to say something about actually acting on them. Well, we like know said, what the building needs are pretty I, I, well. <laughs> you're right. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need another study is what I'm saying. No, yeah. I understand, but we're still, we're in the process of considering those options. So if, if I understand, 
I, in your notes, you did kind of take that out, Evelyn. You took out establishing yeah. task force and changed it to <laughs> investigate options for physical aspects of service delivery that offers access to the entire community. I, I'm that's sounds good to me. But I do I understand what Brianna's saying too. If it was more in this is nice to see your notes, but if you saw it like next to this, then maybe you could see, you know, a little bit more how it's changing. Oh. It's a little confusing. Uh, um, so in, in oh, like Microsoft I, Word, you can do tracked changes. So, okay. Yeah. So you may, so like you have the original that you just like copy and paste into a Word document, and then you put on track changes you. in any edits, it'll note that you've made the edits and then it's easy to follow along what's okay. changing. I'm, I'm rather embarrassed to say this, but I will. Today, I actually learned how to do strikeout. That's great. Should, no, seriously, you should it's have a wonderful seen what it looked like. It would have looked like beforehand with a lot of like uh, parentheses and things. It was, and I, I learned how to do a strikeout. I thought that would be easier. I appreciate that. Um, that will be my next um, uh, hello reference people. Please show me how to do this. I, if it's also, if it's too hard, it's too hard. It's fine. It would just make things a little bit easier for people to see. Out of um, tech savvy with any of this. But what Brianna's proposing, um, it would kind of automatically do strikeout for you. So you would delete something and it would show it as strike, being struck out. So it might actually make things easier for you, Evelyn. Self here, Evelyn the Annoying. So Pardon? I call myself here when I talk to reference, it's Evelyn the Annoying. Help me again. I have using the printer than I ever did before, but thank you for the suggestion. I will go back and try to do all this. If I'm, I may beta test this with like you, some of you to say, is this working? And any suggestions, I appreciate. Because I do want to make this as easy, easy as possible. <laughs> I'm worried. Anyways, you know what I'm going to suggest is that we take a breather from this, at least if we may not even go back to it tonight, but let's back away. Um, certainly we've had some interesting thoughts on, on what should go in word-wise, like percentages, et cetera. Um, okay. well, and, and it started the process. You've be, exactly. You know, it's begun oh. by discussing it tonight. Before Paul says it, and we're going to finish it too. <laughs> Before this, there's... all right. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate this. All right, so we'll go to um, Paul. Do you want to talk about new staff members? New staff members, yes. New staff um, members, please. I gotta, I gotta go back here to um, <clears throat> this was a, a revision eight or nine times of the director's report. But anyway, um, I had uh, written this in my director's report for December about uh, Lori uh, Dreyer, um, <clears throat> but apparently we did not approve that appointment at that time. So I'm reintroducing Lori um, as our new head of the uh, Lansingburg branch. Um, she will be, she is joining our staff as a librarian too. Um, she's been active in uh, professional organizations, um, particularly NILA. <clears throat> and she has uh, um, quite a bit of library experience um, in uh, originally the East Greenbush Library and uh, more recently as uh, head of a branch of uh, the Newburgh. Uh, free library. Um, and so, yeah, okay. Um, and we also have um, <clears throat> another new staff member in the adult services department, um, Ian Hauk, who is hired as a librarian one. Um, <clears throat> Ian oh, can you spell his, uh, that last name? Oh, H-A-U-C-K. 
H A U C K. Okay. Yes. Um, Ian had, um, uh, received his MLS degree in 2017 from SUNY Albany. Um, he was most recently a reference librarian at the Vestal Public Library, uh, where actually I worked at one time, <laughs> briefly. Um, Vestal is just outside of Binghamton. Actually, it's um, my hometown. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so he has a good deal of library experience, and he also has a good deal of um, experience with adult programming, which we may be able to use. So that's, and um, Lori has actually been with us for a couple of months now. <laughs> um, Ian is a relatively recent, um, started a couple of weeks ago. Now, I was also told that um, we mentioned, we would just mention uh, staff members who have left. And so I did. Um, and as I say, it was sad to say goodbye to Amy Rillier, who has been with the TPL and the Young People's uh, Services Department since May of uh, 2017. Her enthusiasm for working with children and young adults and her many program ideas uh, will be sorely missed. So, oh, thank you. Um, per our responsibilities, uh, we need to um, not just acknowledge, but approve the hiring of these two individuals that Paul mentioned. So I will make the motion that we approve um, the addition of Luke Dreyer and Ian Huck to the staff of the Troy Public Library. Do I have a second? A second. Yes. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good. Lansing Berg hours. Okay, yes, that was also in my director's report. Um, as you recall, uh, back earlier on in the pandemic and uh, with the um, difficulty in, in keeping enough staff on board, we reduced the hours at Lansingburg um, back to 24 uh, from 36. Um, with hopefully the pandemic receive, receding and um, with uh, you know the additions to the staff, uh, what I'd like to do is go back to our regular schedule of 36 hours. Um, now that wouldn't be, we, we still have a uh, opening for a library assistant up there. So we need to fill that before we, we go back to the 36 hours. Um, but that could happen relatively soon. Um, you know, so it could be at some time in March that we could go back to the 36 hours. Will you in, uh, increase the number of days or the number of hours in the days you already are scheduled? Well, both actually, yeah. Um, right now, um, we're open Tuesday and Wednesday from one to seven and Friday and Saturday, 10 to four. Um, what we would be doing would be Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, one to seven, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, 10 to four. And there's no question that this will wait until your Lansingburg is fully staffed, correct? No question. <laughs> well, you know, we've been in this, we've had this issue before. Sorry. Just want to make sure we don't ever happen. Well, it was, it was primarily, you know, it's primarily a staffing issue to begin with. Um, 
So yeah, we want to make sure we can do this and not have to retreat, so to speak. Okay. Um, it, it, to be honest, to me, this seems like it's an operational, you know, an operations issue. No, it's not. I don't believe that this is our getting involved as the governance body. I'm glad you, we know about this. Um, well, I don't think yeah, this, we don't have to formally, is... we're trying to say we don't have to formally approve this, <laughs> even though we did take votes on shutting it down, but that was different. I uh, anyone think I'm not correct on that one? It's, I think that uh, certainly the decision as to when there's sufficient staffing to go back is Paul's. Yeah. So good luck with hiring. Good luck with hiring, Paul. And Lori, okay. good luck with hiring. Oh. To both you and Lori. So, um, do you want to start with advocacy? You want to start the discussion of advocacy day? Uh, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to you. Oh, you want to leave that one to me? Great. Okay. Um, I put a lot of information about advocacy day in the president's report. So I don't want to really have to go over things, everything. Um, but Advocacy Day is definitely, um, you might remember Advocacy Day, March. March 2nd, it is gonna be all virtual, unfortunately, um, which is a shame because there is something about the numbers of people that show up on Advocacy Day it makes an impact on the legislators. Uh, many of them come down um, when the group gets, when all the different libraries from across the state come together and the group is on the floor of the well and all the way back to the staircase, it's impressive. I believe that the, um, it's at least anecdotally understood that the library group is one of the, if not the largest group of people that come to uh, the Capitol to advocate. Um, legislators come down to, to tell, us, tell us how much they support the library. Um, it's, it's, it loses some of the impact, certainly when it is virtual, but it will be virtual. Uh, the actual schedule with legislators has not been set yet. As soon as it is, I'll pass that on. Upper Hudson does the scheduling for, you know, our member libraries. How they're going to go about the registration process, I don't know yet. If they're going to limit the number of people from any given library. Um, so as I find out that information, I'll certainly pass that on to everyone else. Um, I will, just as a warning, I wrote this down too, but there's repeating, you know, as legislators have their own daily calendar change, sometimes the meeting schedule changes. So just be aware and keep an eye on where we're actually supposed to be during the day and who we're actually meeting. There are two prep days. Um, one is called the virtual member prep session on February 16th. And then there's a social media training on February 23rd, both of them again virtual. Um, I put the link in there to the NILA page where you can register. So if anyone has the time to do it, they're both on either of those two days, they're at 3 p.m. I know people are working and can't always do it, but I have found in the past, especially the prep session is, is very educational um, and you get a lot of ideas. Um, I know is asked uh, what other things we all could do for advocacy. Certainly when we get those alert letters, um, signing on to those is helpful contacting our legislators 
Um, John McDonald, I know, has mentioned how much he likes to keep a count of how many, literally he will count how many people um, contact his office on an issue. And they're looking at say email and phone calls, letters, Most part, well, there's a, a larger narrative also, by the way, on the NILA website. I, I think in many ways, our thoughts are for systems and for construction funding. Um, Paul likes to say, why is the poster child for this construction fund? And yeah, whenever it comes up, uh, whenever the construction fund comes up, they always ask me to give my, um, my statements about that. But you know, it is rather important. I mean, again, um, like our previous governor, this governor reduced it back to the 14 million original amount. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, the legislature uh, agreed to increase it to 35 million uh, based on the need out there for, um, you know, public library construction funds for libraries. Uh, across New York State, but um, this governor again reduced it back to 14 million. So yeah. that's going to be a, an important part of this battle. Sometimes that battle has worked, and the the amount has gone from 14 to 24, like you said, 35. Um, sometimes it didn't. Didn't we in the state? And this is for all the libraries across the state, not just ours, our our area. Um, 14 million divided up between all these libraries it was difficult to work with, certainly. Um, and that's what we count on. Uh, when there's money, it gets divided up between all the different systems. And then the systems divided up between the member libraries, uh, depending on our requests and what kind of money there is to, to share. Uh, so as we do this, it's important. Um, I will say that usually, when Paul makes his statement, it's it says it talks about how old our library is, um, some of some of the problems that we're having. It's somewhat I want to say generalized. It isn't well we're going to build this or this or this or because at a certain point all these other libraries are kind of saying the same thing. So it's just trying to get those key phrases, keywords. And let them know there's a lot of people who want um, the money increased. It's going to be interesting again this year. I'm trying to think. Does anyone have any questions that, you know? I did want to comment uh, mm -hmm. that it appears with the new districts from the 2020 census that we are having some changes. Yes. So for instance, Assemblyman McDonald is, would now have the Lansingburg Library as well as our library. So he gets all of, I thought there was something that uh, I was thinking that it will almost look like, I know not right now it's Daphne Jordan, but maybe I'm thinking about the Senate too. Um, this year, our current legislators are staying, are the ones that we will have for this budget. Right. But it's the we, year but after. Yes, we do expect. Daphne yes. Jordan, I believe, is uh, replacing Breslin. Yes. And, as and our, our representative. And I, uh, as Daphne Jordan, um, who may lose her own hometown, may no longer be under her jurisdiction, um, was a great supporter of the Half Moon, Clifton Park Half Moon Library. So she does like libraries, but I will say that um, losing Mr. Breslin is, is heartbreaking. Um, when you meet Mr. Breslin, one of the first things he usually says is, hello, my wife's a librarian. Yes. And um, he has been such a strong supporter of libraries. He's been, you know, one of the most vocal supporters of libraries throughout. So uh, losing him will be very sad. Um, it will be a little easier, though, not to have two different representatives for Troy, the downtown Troy and, and Lansingburg. Um, 
I, I used to say that we upper Hudson used should or this or Nyla should get him a t-shirt that says my wife's a librarian and maybe we still should because he'll still be looking at someone else's library. Um, any other questions or any other comments or anything else on advocacy day? <laughs> that uh, we can go back in person because there is something about seeing that crowd in the well. There's something about um, a legislator having to come out into the hallway to talk to people because the hallway is packed. It's great being able to bring babies because they do love seeing, I'm not joking, love seeing babies come and little guys. Um, so hopefully someday we'll go back to the way it was. But, Paul, well, do you want to do the rest of your director's report? Well, I, I think I covered pretty much everything. Um, well, other than the fact that we started automatic renewals, um, which, um, in our case is not as critical as some libraries because we don't have uh, late fines, but it's kind of convenient for people. They don't have to call us up and renew. Um, automatic renewals only apply to books that you can renew. Um, if there's a list of people waiting, then that book cannot be renewed. Um, also, you have to be a, in good standing, shall we say with the library in order to participate in this automatic renewal. Um, one of the thing about Advocacy Day is that there's some limits to the size of those virtual meetings. Whereas the in-person, we can just stuff everybody in the offices and it makes a better showing, believe me. Oh, yeah. But I guess we're stuck with virtual one more year. <clears throat> Um, I did have, um, I, I wanted to introduce a little bit um, about thinking about next year's budget. Um, as far as I can see, there's two rather large questions um, that we need to consider about next year's budget. Um, one is the staff request to join the um, New York State Retirement System. And um, <clears throat> we do know that uh, the cost of that, um, at least for this year, would have been uh, 130,000. Uh, that could change or probably will change. We don't know which direction it's going to go. Um, for next year's um, budget cycle. Um, but it's not going to decrease considerably. So it's a number I think we can use for, uh, you know, thinking about um, this particular issue. The other thing is, uh, as I brought up before, uh, last board meeting, um, we, we do have a relatively high staff turnover, as a lot of places do, and a lot of libraries do. Um, and I think part of the problem is that uh, we are behind um, a number of libraries of similar size in our salary, or our current salary schedule. Um, I'm just by looking at um, this area and by looking at other libraries in New York State of similar size and similar circumstances, um, without doing an actual formal survey, it looks like we could be in the neighborhood of 15% behind in our salary schedule currently. Um, so I think it's something that we need to look at. I think we need to look at revising that salary schedule. Um, and so that's another part of the big budget question. The rest of the budget, um, a lot of it is fairly routine. Um, 
but I think those two questions loom pretty large. So I'm introducing that at this point for thought, for discussion, for further discussion. And um, we have a schedule um, for uh, putting the budget together this year. Uh, beginning, um, Evelyn, sometime, let's see, April meeting, uh, we're talking about um, having some decisions, having some information that we can make decisions from. I put it in the president's report. Yeah. It's, um, um, so it, we're actually, there's a piece for every month so we don't let any of this slide. Um, looking for it. That would be the timetable. So this month was, no, oh, that should be a C. Um, March, we'll, we'll, we'll have to go look at those. We'll start determining the actual choices. Um, April, we, we need to have, get the numbers um, based on those choices. So, if, you know, we're looking at retirement, um, say the benefits, pack. so salary and whatever pieces go into the benefits package. So that could be retirement, it can be health insurance. Um, we need to get some of those actual numbers about what it's going to cost us. Um, then in May to get the, make those recommendations. Um, June, get the preliminary, uh, or a draft, July, revise. Um, and then in August, the final one, and then August of September, it's, we need to prepare the written commentary and do the advocacy for that budget. So we actually did, are doing some to this month and then some next month. Um, Paul, you, you said some, you said this wasn't the formal survey. Um, the intention is to do a formal survey, correct? A more formal survey? As much as possibly we can. Um, it's, it's, there is a, Upper Hudson does a survey of uh, salaries on an ongoing basis. It's just hard to get people to respond to that. I think only three libraries so far have responded, three libraries of any size. Um, and so uh, I will have to, you know, talk to people locally and see if we can get some more numbers locally. Uh, but there's other libraries too in the, in the area. Um, again, I, I look at basically upstate libraries in similar circumstances and similar sizes um, to us. I mean, the whole downstate library thing in Long Island is a totally different ballgame. Um, and it, it's just, you know, not really something we can compare to, but there's a number of libraries um, you know, that we can compare to and we can get some figures, you know, from them. I, I know that we used to do a more, I'll say the formal survey. Um, and I know this was discussed last month about how to go about it. The, the staff used to do it in a sense for us, but as Carolyn has, has said, last, that's not appropriate, um, but certainly they had, may have had some methods that we could, um, I want to say copy or plagiarize these those are inappropriate for anyone on well, the library even, board but use you know well even if we just had a list of the libraries that you would yeah. consider to be similar in size and location i mean couldn't one of us on the board make those phone calls and ask them can you tell me what is the library one starting salary can you tell me what a library clerk makes i mean it's, there's no reason that this all has to fall on paul either That'd be cool because <laughs> I mean that is but, our job. no, I mean <laughs> I had uh, kind of planned on making contact. Um and it you know, it sounds like it 
it, it needs to be done in person. It needs to be done informally, uh, that kind of thing. The, the Upper Hudson survey, really, <laughs> if you actually fill it out, it, it, it covers everything, all benefits, you know, all this other stuff and all positions. And it's pretty elaborate. Um, I think what we're looking for at this point is pretty much salaries and, and pretty much, you know, as many positions as, as we can, uh, because I think we can reach a percentage, um, you know, from that information that's pretty accurate. Well, I would be willing to help you out on that poll if you, if you want to give me some places to call or whatever. Yeah, I'll put that together. Kristen, did you want to say something? If there was more information on the survey than we needed for this immediate inquiry, and maybe the survey could be used as a, as a template or a portion of the survey could be used as a template, but uh, Carolyn knows the questions to ask and with Paul's guidance, so uh, we'll uh, gather great information. So thank you very much. Um, by any, should I in any way think that as, as a vol volunteering, if you were given a template that you would be interested in it. I'll, I'll make this a normal call. Thank you, Carolyn. Is anyone else interested in volunteering to um, survey for that information? I can assist if that's of help. Okay. I have a question. Do you think, Paul, you've said that it's hard enough for you to get the information. Do you think that they'll be receptive to board members contacting them? They're public institutions. They almost have to share that information. Yeah, I would think so. I, I don't think that's a problem. Um, the, the problem of getting this information has been local. Um, as I said, UHLS does this survey. So if everybody filled it out, you know, we'd have a complete picture. But almost nobody fills it out. Um, so it's like pulling teeth. Um, I, will, I will volunteer as well. Thank you, Jerry. Evelyn, I will Thank volunteer. You. Thank you, Jerry. I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my uh, sound on. <laughs> I couldn't get my sound on to tell you before. <laughs> well, you're, you can do now. Yes, good. Um, so you have at least three. Okay. So we can talk, of, you know, how we can divide up the assignments. Yeah. Um, Paul, does some of this material get collected for the annual report, the Upper Hudson annual report? Because in my head, I can't see all the pieces of that. Uh, no. no. Not the way they Not submit. Salaries. Okay. No. Because I know they come up with a lot of information. Let me just check in. And I can certainly ask at the Upper Hudson meeting to see if there's anyone else that we can contact to. Um, obviously, you know, staff's done it. They've gotten the information, so it's out there, just making those right connections. Um, so by the way, thank you to everyone on staff that's done this in the past, too. It's been appreciated. The other, the other question I had too, Evelyn, that we kind of talked about last time yes. was, surveying the staff themselves about what are their priorities in their benefits package? And wouldn't that be a good idea to do that before? Like, is it more important that maybe we pay more of their health insurance, if health insurance or, you know, really what are their, the new, I know the New York state is important, is, is health insurance payment as important? What is, what are their priorities? I personally think that's still a really good idea, but, um, you know, it's, the staff still think that that's a good idea. Well, it could be anonymous. They've I mean, heard they about it. Name it. <laughs> Have they been approached? Do they know this? Um, what, I, I, I still think that's a great idea. You know, I, I think it would certainly help us have more informed decision making when we come to the to the planning and the budget. You know, not only how much is the health insurance going to cost, but are we is it 50% that we're offering? Is it, 
would they be happier if we paid all of their health insurance and we didn't join the New York State retirement? Right. You know? I think it would help with retention as well. The comprehensive Benny package. And what goes into it? Um, I mean, we talked about coming up with the survey. You want to sit down and kind of look at what might go into those as a question, especially the three that, that I thought that was referred to the administration committee. It was, but then you guys didn't. It didn't meet, right? Well, uh, because I was sick. Oh, I, absolutely. I didn't know what. Yeah. It was. Uh, so uh, it would have been not a good use of people's time if I tried to run the meeting. It doesn't seem so it's going to be rescheduled. Do you know when? Because, you know, I feel there's a bit of this timeliness to this. Um, I don't. I have to establish a date with the members. But I would assume later this month. The, the committee does seem ill-fated. Well, um, how's this as an idea? Since we have certainly some people who have volunteered to gather the information, if some of these volunteers want to come up with some questions, and that can certainly be looked at, and then certainly if, if the timing works, brought to an admin committee meeting, and we can sure. talk about it. I, I would have thought, though, that just doing the, the salary survey would be a, quite a bit of work. But sure, you know, anybody is always welcome to do it that way. Have input into the, the committees. You know, I, I, I do figure that I see this as, again, the timeliness of this. It's waiting for another meeting to come up with another meeting. Um, I, I guess I don't follow that, but. Well, if we have to wait until there's an admin meeting and then come up with some sort of survey or questionnaire, it's, there's again, a lag, of, a time lag. And before you know it, it's going to be March's meeting, you know, board meeting and. Um, uh, well, we can, you know, it was suggested, it wasn't asked of the, the administration committee whether they were willing to proceed with it or not. So if you want to do it separately, we'll just take it back from that. That makes sense. For those of, of you guys who have, those of us who have volunteered, um, would that be okay? I'm not really sure what we're, I'm got, I've gotten confused at this point, for, uh, Evelyn. You would suggest that the questionnaire that the of what you want. Committee. Right. Oh, we might want to start working on that now. Um, if it does need to go to admin, we can always bring it up to the, at the next meeting and say, this is what it is. What do you think? But at least we're working on it in advance. Okay. That's just the idea. Okay. Okay. Um, for, the record, for the record, I just want to clarify. I, I only had volunteered to ask questions on the telephone. Uh, anybody wants to tell me what questions to ask, I'm happy to ask them. But uh, Understood. I'm not volunteering to... Uh, help right. the, create the questionnaire. Understood. You know, again, it was whoever of the those wished to. Thanks, Kirsten. Um, all right. So does anyone want to have any more questions or discussion points on the section of Paul's report? No, it's a, it's a big one. So there is something that I want to say now before I forget to is as we go through the process, um, I think at some point we should see how we're going to, and I, I like the word institutionalize the process so that in the future, it just becomes something that we do automatically. 
Um, so it's this board or any other board, um, whoever's an admin, they go through the process. And uh, again, this is just a thought. It's just for some for, for us to think about at some point um, is putting this into our financial policy because some of the financial policy that we have determines the, you know, the timetable of budgeting. And we could add some of these pieces to that policy. So we're following it on an ongoing basis. And I want to share that now because I never remember, if, I'm never sure if I'm gonna forget something later. We can talk about it at some point in the near future. All right, back to, so no other questions on that. Um, observations in community feedback. Um, I heard some good feedback about the Lansingburg manager. She's here. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know that when I said it. <laughs> oh, it's good feedback. It's good feedback, you said. Our good people are happy that, about new copiers coming. <laughs> Any word when they're in, Paul? Uh, we're still waiting. You know, it's like um, <laughs> waiting on everything out there. <laughs> um, should be now in a should be a couple of weeks. Evelyn, I have a question about your president's report. Yes, you have a you have a large section about racial equity training. Yes. And then you had like a lot of options. Yes. And so I guess my question is, are we as a board choosing these options? I mean, what are the, where are we going with this? Well, at this point, I'm glad you asked. Um, it's a new initiative from Upper Hudson. This is going through 2023. So not that I like to always put things off, even though I might be a procrastinator at times. Um, I just wanted to get everyone the give everyone the final draft. Last month I put in the um, I, I think I used the Upper Hudson report as the vehicle, uh, but this is the final set. Um, it, just to be aware of some of the some of the training that's coming, the so copy and pasted it in. Um, the Upper Hudson Board tomorrow is going to determine its own training. We're going to try and beta test it. So each of us then has a better idea of what it's like so we can go back to our own boards and, and talk about it. But these are the possibilities of some, I forget how many months ago we talked about um, our interest that we had to, as a board, come up with a certain, you know, answer a survey of how many hours we wanted to put into this. And I know, um, I think people are, were dealing with that very tentatively about what's going to be expected, what's going to be covered. So hopefully, I'll get some more information on, you know, what it's really like to go through the training, um, time commitment, um, how it's going to be delivered. And we, it, this is not, um, this is like optional. This is not something that any of us are obligated. You know, we're not obligated as a board to do it. Uh, I, I personally find that these are the things that help us become a little bit more aware of what's going on and what we should be looking at in making decisions. Um, so I, this, I guess my question for you really was, is. So is this something that's open to the board now or it's something that will be open to the board at a later date? It's, it's open now. Um, only one staff has gone through the training, uh, but I will tell you that that staff is um, the staff of the president of the Upper Hudson Board. So that might, that might have had a little bit to do with why they chose to do it. Uh, no board yet has signed up for it as of 
Friday. Um, I don't know if any board will have done that. In fact, that became part of the discussion. Um, for Upper Hudson members, do you want to do it once with Upper Hudson and then again with your board? Some people were saying yes and some people are saying no. Um, again, this is just something that has been put in play. If we wanted to sign up now, we could. I, I don't know if people are ready or interested in really thinking about that, but it's something for us to be aware of. And um, certainly as I get more information on it, I'm going to share it with all of you too. But there's a separate okay, right. training for staff and a separate training for boards. Yes, Kirsten. The multiple uh, options you've presented, are there any that you are recommending for consideration for this board? Feeling about training, which is you go for the optimum because then you cover all bases, all topics, and you're not missing out on anything. But that just, you know, my feeling about training, period, and that sort of, that comes from my own background in delivering training. Um, but right now, no. And again, I haven't went through it, so I'm not 100% sure what we're, what, you know, we'd all be getting into. But you. you're welcome. And if I'm understanding this correctly, so the whole board has to sign up on for it? Is that what you're saying? It's done as a board? It's done as a board, yes. Uh, again, that was another question because people wanted at Upper Hudson wanted not to go to the optimum because in order to keep attendance um, and the dynamic of attendance as a group, it was some people thought if we did less sessions instead of going to the maximum of six, it would be more likely that we'd get better attendance. But there's again, this is nothing that every anyone is. Once you do it, if you can't make a session, you don't make a session. It's different than coming to board meetings when we are in many ways have a certain different kind of obligation to coming to a board meeting. So, but the idea was to do it as a, as a board of seven and hopefully find a time where the seven of us could commit to being there regularly. My thought is keep it short, keep it local. I'm not interested in doing nine hours of this. Yeah, I, think, I know a lot of people don't do it. I, I think that was uh, made loud and clear when we talked about answering the survey, but... Um, but again, to be continued as a discussion point, but I, I wanted to share that, you know, share the information now. So any other, any other um, pieces of business, either all new questions, discussion points? I have one. Um, I'm sure you're like tired of me have questions, but so when you sent out all the um, information about the long-term planning and then you had the strategic goals and then you had these nice, like, mm -hmm. kind of, what are we doing with these? And I, I think they're great because they actually have accountability and they're like, they're tasks that we should be working on. But when are we, when do they come into play? I think as we can, we, we go through the 2011 and come up with that structure and then we incorporate those pieces. And some of these pieces, you know, we, we, we might find are valid and some might not be as valid. Uh, so there's two pieces. There's one is the blank, and then there's some of the things that came up. Uh, we came up with, um, you know, to fill the, to fill this to fill those areas. I think it's going through those and fitting them into the structure that we come up with next. You know, again, I went when I rewrote this, I did it broader, but then we can put little A, B, C, and say, this is what we're going to do. Who's going to do it? If we have to set, if we can set a timetable on when they're could or should be done, fine. If some things are just ongoing, that would be fine too. Um, I think when we did this, a lot of, many people were, a lot of it fell on staff. Some things are board responsibilities, but a lot of things fell on staff. 
and it, it can be seen as somewhat artificial at times. And things have changed so much right now. You know, we went through issues with being able to meet the publics, have the public in here like we used to, um, staffing issues. So I think that we have to deal with really carefully as, as we head forward. But I think those are more of the strategic points than just a general long-term plan. So we're not going to use them right now? Not we're right now, but they're, we're not going to lose the information. They're, it's valuable information. People put time and effort into creating that piece, that document. You know, the um, going through the process, I don't want to lose any of it. I guess my question is more about this, you know, where the, the form where you're saying like task one, two, and three, they're not filled in. So, I mean, is that something you want us to be working on? it now because that can um, also inform some of the more broad sections. You know, it's a balancing act. Again, it's looking at the two pieces, trying to incorporate them and trying to do it over the internet. Um, there is a version uh, where some of them were filled out. You know, the pieces were filled out. I put everything in the Dropbox because I think it not everyone went through this. Not everyone's familiar with the material. So I wanted to make sure it was consolidated in one spot. Um, and that way it can you know, people can refer to it as you we go forward with this. Um, but I think that's gotta be incorporated like in the, in, in another, in the second phase. Any degree? Carolyn, did, right. that, did, did that answer, did, did what I just yeah, said? I, I, I mean, it was with the stuff that you sent out to the planning for today. So I didn't know whether we're supposed to be doing something with it or. Yeah, I just wanted it all in, in one place. So, yes, I, um, we, as far as I, can determine we haven't approved the final historic structure report. Is that the case, Kirsten? Did we recommend, did, did we vote to recommend that that be done at this meeting? Uh, we had talked about it, but I think there was an objection that we need to add some more language to it. So I, we've gotten that language added to it. So I don't think the committee has formally uh, voted to uh, sign off on the report pending that final language, which was brought up at the last meeting. Um, I, I thought that the, the recommendation was that, um, that it be recommended for approval with the incorporation of that, that language. I'm, you cut out. I'm saying I'm open to that personally. Um, a, I'm not yes. comfortable saying that for the entire committee. Uh, yeah, wouldn't want to presume that. Uh, you think it is it reflected that way in the minutes? Did you send minutes out? I, I you, you cut out, so. I apologize, it's, it seems to be breaking up for a lot of people. I, I don't think we're ready to make that recommendation. I don't think there's been a final action taken on it by the committee because there was a last minute addition to the, at a member request. So that member request has been addressed, but I can't say for sure that the entire committee had said yes. Okay. Um, and I, I don't remember, I, I thought we voted to, to have it gone. I'm just concerned that we need the report finalized so we can go after funding and also, you know. Uh, I agree with you. Get the reports to the granting sources and so forth. So I hate to see it wait another, another month. I don't think that it's anything to say that we had have to get a recommendation from 
the committee. What's really required is board approval. Well, then I would ask for a informal poll of the committee members who are currently present to see if anyone has an objection to accepting the report as it has been amended and as it currently stands. Are there any objections? Clarify again, is it, was this just adding boilerplate to thank more people for funding the report? Clarify that. Correct. And I have no objection. Thank them all and hold them up again. Shall I make a motion? Um, I move that the board accept the final version of the historic structure report with the addition of acknowledgement of the award from the Preservation League. I'll second that. Oops. I guess Evelyn should have been doing this. Evelyn, would you like to call for a vote? Sorry, wait a second. Marie, what, what was your language again? Approve the final edition of the Historic Structures Report with the inclusion of the acknowledgement. Of the Preservation League. OK, award. thank you. Sorry, did I interrupt someone? No, we just no. want to be, are you ready? We're just going to call for a vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we have the motion. We have a second own favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. And in reference to this, the website, the Troy City website for accepting applications for American Rescue Plan funding is now up. So I believe that we should be pursuing funds through there. Are you looking at is it for building? Is it for structures, capital projects, or general? Uh, are you asking what I'm suggesting we pursue it for? Well, I guess the question is, what do you know of their requests? What kind of requests are they looking for versus before we talk about what we'd be requesting? I don't know yet, but anything, I've been told that anything that should, should be submitted, should meet the requirements for American Rescue Plan funding. Maybe we should get the details on what their, what their requirements are too. So who, who would like to do that? Okay, Kirsten, do you have access to the American Rescue Plan uh, find it. website? I'll find it. Pardon? We'll find it. Or I can, I can email it to you. I can email you the information. Thank you. Um, another question I have is, are we going to continue virtually or go back to hybrid at this time with the rates having fallen? Depends on, uh, again, a, a few more things. I you know the governor's going to make an announcement tomorrow. No, I didn't know that. Yep, she's going to make an announcement tomorrow on, on mandates. Um, I'd like to hear what she has to say now, if there's gonna be any changes. Um, I don't know when she's going to call an end to the uh, emergency, but I think we've got four weeks, at least for this board meeting, to see what the numbers are going to be like. Um, 
And as we get closer, we'll, we'll see if they've gone down. Um, we'll see if there's any new mandates. Um, it, we'll see if there's been any changes on whether or not we are now required to go in person. I think we've got to stay fluid. Okay, thank you. I am probably going to need hybrid in April. Say what? Oh, hybrid? I am to need it as a hybrid meeting in April. So is that the, um, I want to say, retirement month? Yep, but I, I have, I may be immunocompromised after surgery in March, end of March. So <laughs> April, I may want to stick okay. in a closed room. Okay. You know, we always have that option anyways, that, you know, even before the pandemic, boards could meet, you know, members of the board could meet um, over Skype. I, there are certain requirements to do that, uh, but there's always that possibility too, depending on what the, um, what the state's mandate is on public, you know, open government. But we'll keep in, we'll make sure you know what's going on and make sure we can follow all those. But I think right now it's, it's just staying fluid. So you know, with these numbers, they're going down now, but they've gone down before and then they went skyrocketing. Any other? So I just have a question. Yeah. So where are we going with a long range plan? So you're gonna okay. you're gonna make just your changes to One. whatever, and then are we look are we like there's? I feel like we should do something between now and the next meeting <laughs> towards. Um, I'm going to get a long. tutorial on how to um, use word processing better or to our full advantage, um, and then redo the pieces. As, as you and Brianna suggested so far. And then, um, you know, if, if we could also talk, we're not making decisions if we use email or talk to each other, um, but we can restructure as we go along. And I will, I will make sure those, as I learn and go through this, it'll make it easier and quicker to get everything out to everybody. Um, and then so by next month, we should be able to say, okay, this is some of the commentary and it, it should go a lot faster. And then if we get these two sections then we can go through another section, like we, I don't think we're going to go, we really want to go back to the environment piece tonight, but, um, let's take a stab at that. I, I, do people think that, you know, at least going through a bit of this process, Maybe what we need to do a little clear, or what we could be doing make a little was was it made a little clear? I think I indicated earlier that I felt that way that it was good to start the thought yeah. process about it that way. And I thank you, Marie, for that. Um, so does that sound like? Am I reiterating that well enough? Yes. Yes, I just want to, you know, kind of know where we're going from here. Yes. So I think that's our next step. Um, oh, I, for, I keep forgetting that Fred has to leave at seven. I'm going to have to tell her to remind me. Um, so public comment. Um, I'd like to jump in. Um, yes, I'm please. Virginia. I'm the head of the circulation department. Um, I kind of feel like um, some of the staff wanted to be part of the conversations going forward and making sure that the board understood our perspective while you have decisions to make regarding our requests with retirement and salaries, but also understanding the issues that we're facing as a result of the staffing shortages and um, what that means day to day going forward. Um, it seems to me that the board is aware of the issues, at least generally, and we're grateful that you know, you're know you taking our considerations uh, and requests uh, seriously at this point. Um, 
but there are a few things that I don't think get conveyed because we are committed to the success of the library and um, you might as a board not necessarily understand those points on the day to day again as I said. So um, obviously staffing shortages you've seen resulted in the Lansingburg branch having to reduce their hours. Um, but what you don't, you don't necessarily see is um, some staff doing 12 or 13 hour shifts or working multiple days doing 10 hour shifts to make sure that the hours are covered or departments being left unmanned because there just aren't enough st staff to do that. Um, I, I guess my point being at this point is when you're making considerations and working over numbers and coming up with suggestions is to remember that there's two fold to that. The first being recruitment and then the second being retention. You want to make sure that you're being competitive enough for new staff to want to join on our teams, but you also want to commit to the success of your staff that have stuck it out and um, reinforce their loyalty as well. Uh, I don't feel that some, I feel, so, excuse me, I feel sometimes uh, there's a communication gap uh, that things don't flow as naturally. Being a small organization, everybody just assumes everybody knows everything else. Um, but really the conversations might stop at a each level depending on where they are. So the department head specifically have recommitted ourselves to trying to attend the board meetings to make ourselves available to give perspective or feedback if needed, but also so that we're connecting with the board. Um, Paul is our bridge, but sometimes it's good to have a footing on each side uh, so that more than one point of view can be expressed, um, particularly uh, with the benefits and uh, the retirement request. I think a salary, excuse me, a staff survey done sooner than later is a great idea. Um, if you do that so that people can answer anonymously, they'll feel more empowered to answer candidly. Uh, and if you do that annually, that will keep on top of things and maybe address any changes you have made and whether or not they're working. Um, <clears throat> I did want to just one point about the salary survey that you guys are doing, which is great. I'm glad that you're taking that on because it should never have rested on the staff in the first place. But those one-on-one -on -one conversations are the only way you're gonna get the information you need. If you're relying on an email or um, you know, a survey done you know, broadly like by Upper Hudson, you're not going to get the details. You really have to do that one-on-one -on -one phone call and connection. So I was glad that that came up. So thank you guys for jumping in to do that as well. <clears throat> uh, I won't talk forever. And I, I hope Carol or Lori also has things to add to this. But the last meeting, the board meeting, um, it, camaraderie and morale were discussed. And um, I want to make sure that the board understand those are not exclusive and interchangeable words. Camaraderie among staff is high and it remains high because we're committed to our success as a team, success as a team and we actively work to maintain those relationships. But morale is plummeting. And the longer we are understaffed and dealing and exposed to the trauma and the excess, not just COVID, but these things were boiling before COVID, they're just being magnified because of COVID. Um, they're very different things, camaraderie and morale. Uh, and empowering your staff and showing value to your staff and making sure they're heard is a great way to, uh, to boost that from your level. Um, I think I'm gonna let Carol talk now because I feel like I say a lot. <laughs> Oh, but you're so articulate. Thank you, Virginia. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add, um, except that um, she's right and morale, um, morale has suffered and um, it's very hard to see really talented people leave because um, Troy, the, you know, Troy has the reputation of being a place that people go um, to start and then go on to, to other places um, because 
um, the benefits and the pay are are really comparatively they're they're really low. And I and I know that you're you're I appreciate that you're you're hearing that. Um, but for example, um, you know the the retirement. I mean, the salary has to be has to be dealt with anyways, I mean, on a regular basis, and the salary schedule has to be updated continually. Um, but the New York State retirement is something that um, benefits everybody. And I appreciate that the health care is expensive. Um, but for example, I don't get the health care, and there's other people that don't. Um, so you know, we wrote a letter about the retirement because that's our priority right now. Um, I think it's great to get to get input from people, um, but I just wanted to make sure you understand that that's something that we care about, and that's why we we put it in a letter and had everybody sign it. And for what it's worth, um, I think every librarian in our library can you hear me? Every Every library, I'm sorry, every librarian has, has experience or some time in the system that's currently working in our library, I think with one exception. Um, so to me, that's a significant amount of people. So, um, and what, what um, Virginia was saying though about the salary schedules, I've done that um, and I've called people and people, Librarians are a great bunch. They've been very happy to share um, what's going on at their libraries. And you can learn a lot that way. And it's also, it's a great place, um, or rather a great way to make connections with people. Um, so thank you. That's all I have to say. I guess I will add one more thing with the retirement. Um, all, um, I, I'm pretty sure almost all of the staff signed that letter. Um, whether or not a, any particular person is currently enrolled in some way or had time in the New York State retirement system really is irrelevant because everyone understands the value, both personally and professionally, for the institution of contributing and being able to offer that option to new hires let alone people that are currently in the uh, library working, whether or not they have retirement at all or that New York State is irrelevant. So as you're going forward, I would invite you to include the staff on your process so that we feel um, heard on that aspect. Um, if you're going to invite representatives to come in, um, that would be lovely. I, I think everybody sh would want that information as well. Um, I don't know specifically where the admin committee is on all of that, and I'm not asking for that at this time. Um, I just want to reiterate what Carol was saying, that that really is the foremost um, issue with the staff as a collective even if they don't personally feel that that will do them any better than the current offering of TIA, it is institutionally more important. I just wanna jump in. Uh, this is Lori um, and, and say that I have not been at the library for very long um, and I am still getting a lot of the context and background um, for a lot of things that are happening and have happened. Um, but that said, I, I agree with uh, everything that Carol and Virginia have said um, up to this point. And um, I, uh, so I want, it, I want it noted that as much. Um, I also wanted to point out that um, any union library has to have a published salary schedule. So uh, for whoever's doing that research, that may be an avenue uh, for that information. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to put that out there because I am nothing else if not a librarian and I wanna make sure people get the information they want. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. 
and Carol. Thank you from us too. Any more comments? I want to make sure we do not cut this off. Um, well, last call for anything else, an additional commentary? Anyone? Okay. In that case, I'm going to remind everyone our next uh, date and time of meeting is March 8th. Five o'clock will be finance, 5.30 is the regular meeting. Um, mode to be determined. Um, but we'll make sure everybody knows and make sure it's really clear. And in that case too, I'm going to make the motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Oh, we got a lot of it. I, I don't think this is going to be um, So all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you everybody for being here. Everyone stay well, have a good night, a good till our next meeting. Um, thank you. And I think that concludes our broadcast day. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night.